I'd say I'm a pretty advanced Angular user, so when I first saw that there was a desktop-based app for the Angular CLI, my initial thought was I probably don't have any need for that. But then I actually used it and was very surprised at the productivity gains I got out of it. Over the next few minutes, I'll take you through all the core features of the Angular console and explain why I think it's a powerful tool for developers of all skill levels. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find the full write-up at angularfirebase.com. The Angular console is built by Narwhal, and it's an Electron app that provides a graphical user interface for the Angular CLI. It's currently available on Mac and Windows, but there should be a Linux version available in the future. Go ahead and download it onto your system, open it, and then the first thing you'll do is just select a directory to create a new project, or you can import an existing project. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. The first thing I'll do is give it a name, and then we can select the set of schematics that we want to use for this project. You have the option for NX here, but I'll just be using the regular Angular CLI schematics for now. That's going to create a new project with the CLI, and then you'll see we get the output from the command line directly in the app here. When that's done, we can open up our project in the IDE. You can see I have a link here for VS Code up in the top right. I'll go ahead and keep VS Code opened up here on the right for the rest of the video. One of the reasons this app is really good for productivity is because the Angular CLI is just so complex. There's so many different options and generators, it's hard to keep track of everything. Clicking a set of buttons tends to be a lot faster than trying to memorize and type out every single command. For example, if we want to serve an app, we can just hit the serve button, and then we have a set of options here, plus a couple of default configurations. And everything is documented for you right here, so you know exactly what each knob does without having to go search through the documentation. Serving an app is pretty simple, but when you get into generators for components and modules, there are dozens of different options, and it's impossible to memorize all of them. Let's see how quickly we can set up a shared module here. I'll go to the module generator, and then we fill out the required field, such as the name, the associated project, and then we'll also go ahead and import this module into our existing app module. And you'll also see in the console, it executes a dry run of the command before you click generate. So you'll know if there are any issues before you actually run this command. When we click generate, it sets up the shared module as expected in our app directory. But right now it's empty, so let's go ahead and add some components to it. One of my favorite things about the console is that it will automatically detect this module. So now we can add components to it easily just by clicking that module in the UI. Typing out the path to a module from the command line is pretty tedious and error prone, so this UI just makes your life a lot easier in that regard. Then just for fun, we'll go ahead and set some random optional fields, and you can see the command below gets really long. The CLI command's probably like 200 characters, which is not something that you want to be typing out by hand. If we go ahead and click generate, you'll see that component gets added to our shared module with all the various options that we selected. The console can also run your NPM scripts. If you look over here on the right, I'm creating my own custom script that just says say hello. And we'll just have it echo my name back. Then if you watch over on the left side, as soon as I create it, it shows up in my package JSON scripts here in the Angular console. Then we can just go ahead and click run and it echoes my name back as expected. Now there's one more thing in the console I want to show you that I think is extremely useful, but will become even more useful in the future as more third-party schematics are created. One of the new features in Angular 6 was the ability to use ng-add, which allows developers to add third-party libraries to their existing project without any setup. If you click on the puzzle piece, you'll see a registry of a whole bunch of different third-party schematics such as ngrx, native script, kendo UI, and a bunch of others. What I really like about this is that everything is centralized in a single place, so I don't have to go searching on Google for different schematics offered by different third parties. So a simple example of using ng-add would be if you want to add ngrx store to your app. You simply click on the schematic, run it, and you'll see our actual code gets updated with a store module in the app module, plus installs all of the ngrx dependencies. A growing area in the Angular ecosystem is the use of third-party schematics, which are essentially mods for the Angular CLI. A good example would be NativeScript if you're building a native mobile app. You can generate components that are suitable for iOS and Android. So let's go ahead and add the NativeScript schematics to our project. You'll notice that updates our package JSON with a couple of new scripts that we can run from the console, but it also gives us a whole other set of generators specifically for NativeScript. If you click on the code icon, you'll see we now have schematics for the Angular CLI plus native script. 
And overall, they look similar, but they do different things. So let's go ahead and generate a component for NativeScript. You'll notice a handful of different options based on the platform that you're targeting. And when you generate the component, if you look at the code, you'll notice some slight differences, such as the TNS extension, and also a component that has a native widget instead of just plain HTML. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. I'm sure they'll be adding additional features to the console in the future, but it's already a great productivity booster in its current state, so you'll probably see me using it on future videos. If you're building an Angular Firebase app and looking to get that app into production as soon as possible, consider signing up for a pro membership at angularfirebase.com. You'll get access to full courses and advanced content designed to help you build and ship your app faster. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.